Welcome back to the series. In this series, we've been focusing on learning the Langchain library, especially the uh, JS part of it, with uh, Node.js TypeScript and involving the OpenAI API to create applications. If you've been uh, following the series, things are going to be a lot simpler for you. But if not, I would strongly recommend that you go uh, visit uh, the other ones, like uh, part one, two, three, four. Check them out, and that will explain a lot for you. So I'm just going to go give you a quick overview here. So this is a with the setup where we are calling in the .env. .env basically providing our Langchain OpenAI with the uh, necessary API key from the uh, .env file. I have an example here. So all you have to do is just uh, mention this exactly open ai underscore api underscore key so the lang chain will understand it to uh, load it up and uh, this time we're going to go ahead and load data from pdf file and train our llm or uh, open ai api and then we're going to go ahead and retrieve data in a q a fashion using these functions retrieval qa chain load qa stuff chain and we're going to be storing everything in a file store, which is a vector store. And to create our embeddings, we're going to uh, use this OpenAI embeds from OpenAI via Langchain. And to create these embeddings, we're going to be using the recursive character text splitter, just like before when we pull the data in from text file. That being said, the same constructor we're following. Here we are declaring the model and with a streaming true so that we are guiding the stream to give us all the output in the standard out or in our command prompt. And now let's go find the method we are going to focus on this time. And this is it. Process PDF to vector store. So like before, we have a source doc folder. And in here we have cv underscore moose dot PDF. This is basically my resume in a PDF format. So we can actually see here, this is what the uh, document looks like, all the company names and such, and education, uh, details of the sorts of uh, experiences, some synopsis on the left-hand side, the certifications, language skills, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the file we're going to be querying in the end. And that being said, uh, this time we're going to go ahead and launch it step by step. For example, as you have seen before, what we did with the text files, the same steps, only uh, just the functions are going to be different. Before we used a uh, text loader here, now PDF loader. And as you saw here, it's coming from Langchain document loader FS PDF. So once we load it up and we have uh, some attributes here, parsed item separator, you know, initially uh, we just uh, giving it no separator. Uh, normally it uses like a comma or whatever. Uh, and then split pages, we're setting it to false because otherwise it actually loads up page by page, but we are telling it that uh, load the whole thing at once, right? So because, you know, we need the text data. That being said, we are loading the docs loading you know using loader.load function and uh, now we need to split it up into smaller chunks so that we can create our embeds properly just like before we are using the same function recursive character text splitter this is also coming from langchain text splitter okay and the same way, we are just uh, giving it the chunk size of 200 and overlap of 50. And this time, we, I actually intentionally commented out everything because we want to go step by step. Last time, I actually should have been doing it, but I missed. So this time, let's see, once we split it up, what this document looks like. So let's uh, enable this guy here, save it, click docs. And now we go here and... I already have the object instantiated using Langchain PDF, this class right here. And we're gonna call the method now. All right, so actually spelling mistake. All right, so Langchain PDF dot process PDF to vector store. Where is it? It is right here. Process PDF to vector store. And we're just gonna see what the split document looked like. Uh, let's save that. 
go back and npm run dev. All right. So we are reading the document and splitting it up, and that's what it's looking like. Those are the metadata, and the rest of the detail are these are the small chunks that it created. Now, let's see. We go back here. We disable this guy and enable this guy. And this time, we're going to see how our embeddings look like. We're going to we utilize open AI embeddings, which coming from right here. Langchain embeddings, open AI. All right. So let's see what our embeds look like. Save it. Go back. There you go. This is what our embeddings look like, right? I mean, you know, this is not really necessary, but uh, it's good to know what we are, you know, after what we're dealing with. So now we have our embeddings ready, and let's create the vector store. And as before, we are using the file store to create our vector store, which is a created by uh, Facebook, which is a you know fantastic library uh, for ve storing vectors very accurate for semantic searches and uh, creating chatbots, scalable too, but it's a file-based one. You know, it actually sits on the local hard drive of your server, but if you like to create a, a vector store in a database, please consult the, the video before where I showed the Chroma DB vector store, how to create it, how to uh, use it, etc. That being said, let's go. Now, uh, after it is finished, it's not going to really show much. So I'm going to enable a console.log so it shows us once it's done. And meanwhile, look at the uh, location vector store PDF, right? Vector store PDF currently empty. There's nothing there. All right, so let's save and go here. Keep looking at here. Boom. PDF to files vector store created successfully. Now, if we look under here, vector store PDF successfully done. So we do have our vector store created. Next, we're gonna test it out by creating a small chatbot asking it questions. All right, so we use process PDF to vector store to create this vector store under this, uh, this folder. So now this time we're going to use this function, use twice vector store function to actually communicate with it. Do it like a question and answer session, just like we did on the text one. I mean, the previous video when we dealt with the text file. So this is pretty much exactly the same uh, function. Only thing is uh, we just change this uh, folder name to vector store PDF. We're targeting this guy right here. Other than that, pretty much everything is the same, same model, same functions, everything. But, you know, once we test it with this, we're going to push it a little bit farther. But for now, let's go. And as you can see, this one taking a uh, string as a prompt. And that's what we're using here as a question, right? So let's go here. Okay, so we disabled that one. And now we're going to ask questions. Okay, so let's see. Whose resume is this? Okay, go here, run dev. The resume belongs to Ahmed Musarid. Go verify right there. Good job. All right, so what certifications does he have? Okay, let's uh, enable that, save. We're looking for certifications. All right, look at that, nice. And to verify, we go and find exact same set, great. And then let's say, where did he study? Okay, San Francisco International University. So we go back and uh, let's see, all the way down. That's where it is, so far so good. Now, as mentioned, we're going to go ahead and uh, improve upon this one a little bit because we know how to do prompt engineering using prompt template variables, etc. So look at this question, though. What kind of document is this, right? Let's see what it says. So based on a 
provided context, it is not possible to determine blah, 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 right? So it kind of knows where things are, but doesn't have any context as to what it is dealing with. So because of that, I have seen certain questions giving me messed up answers. So what we're going to do, we're going to keep this, but I'll be right back with a updated form of the Langchain PDF. All right. So look at this. Now we have the same function, use FICE vector store, but it looks a lot different. I mean, the initial stuff is the same, you know, it's uh, creating embeddings and then uh, fetching the uh, vector store with the uh, PDF file, I mean, actually the target folder where our FICE store is. But uh, here we are declaring a from template. This time we're just telling it like the given context is a is Ahmed's resume. Use the following pieces of context to answer the question at the end. So uh, if you don't know the answer, just say you don't know, blah, 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 don't make up anything. Uh, there, use three sentence maximum to keep the answer as concise as possible. Also, you must provide question in all uppercase format at the top of every answer. Always say thanks for asking at the end of the answer. So there we provide the context as a variable and the question, colon question, and tell it, okay, now display the question here. The answer uh, must be all in a lower case and you uh, must use the person's name found in the context to replace he or she. Then to get it right, you must give it example like this. For example, Ahmed did such and such, Ahmed studied such and such, etc. And then if, if the answer contains a list of things, for example, what, he did, what did he do, what does he know, etc., you must answer in a list format. So a lot to uh, digest here, a lot of stuff is given, but the bottom line is uh, two variables, context and question. And we have studied a uh, prompt template before, so this should not be new to you. So this is a like a you know constant we declared from template input variable context and question and then we're putting in the whole template here once done you know this part remains ex almost exactly the same except besides this model we're just giving it a prompt and this QA chain prompt only thing different is uh, this template and we build a uh, from template, custom template with variables, and we pass it along with the load QA stuff chain and the model. So when this time it loads the model, it also knows how, you know, when to load the uh, instruction. In my experience, it did not work. So we don't really need it. So let's save that. So the same way we just use the await the chain call and the query should be the prompt and the prompt should be coming from right here which means we call it from here. So as you saw before, let me see where we are here. Right, so last time it, the, the answer to that question, the question was this, right? It, like, what kind of doc is this? And it said, based on provided context, it is not possible to determine what kind of document this is. All right, so now let's see what it says this time. resume see i told it to ask you know answer very concisely it just blurs out resume so i'm gonna go ahead and tweak it a little bit and come back all right i'm back sorry guys uh, as you can see here it is answering it exactly the way i wanted it to by repeating the question in uppercase and then answering it at the bottom and saying thanks for asking and uh turns out the problem wasn't uh, where i thought it was basically uh, when I was, you know, testing it, I used, I upgraded the API to GPT-4 preview, I mean, which is basically GPT-4 Turbo. And when I was recording, uh, you know, I used uh, this one, 3.5, which is stupid. You know, this is not very smart and it does crazy stuff. But 4, on the other hand, especially for Turbo, is much better at doing things. So once I changed it, and kept everything same just as, as it was and this is the prompt template with the variables pass it along 
and let me just remove that because this is not this is not necessary okay so now let's go uh, ask it another question let's say how did how long he worked at at and t boom there you go the question and then answer and accurate answer too because if you look at here we go under at and t look at this 2002 2010 eight years and six months and that's exactly what it told me so and let's try another one let's see uh what did he do at deepcast boom and look at that i told you to give it a list list wise answer wherever you can find a list and it created a list right there and now let's test it for something else let's say what does he know about web hosting so let's see how he answers it look at that another list because i gave it example and told it what to do and did exactly right and this answer is accurate also now let's see uh test it for hallucination so this time let's see if i say what is open ai and what does it do okay so look like it uh, went out of context so let's see if we can alter our prompt all right guys i took around a little bit and i did find the issue and got it back on track now as you can see that you know answering the questions correctly and when i asked it like the, what is uh, open ai i don't know because it is out of context right so this is what i did just you know before it was like a display the question in full and colon and empty right so i just added must and uh mention this uh, variable again in braces and you must not answer out of context if asked out of context questions just say i don't know right the only thing i had to do here is uh, just add must and a uh, question here in variable and then we started the process so for example let's say if i disable this and ask it who is on must enable it save let's see I don't know thanks for asking so if it is uh, not in the context is not going to answer anymore and we are back on track and it is also repeating the question in uppercase and answering everything correctly so that actually concludes our effort to advance prompt engineering using langchain node.js and typescript utilizing the openai api thanks for watching